So, hi everyone. Um, my name is Yunzi. I'm a fourth year PhD student um, of film studies at SOAS. And I'm also the editor in chief of the SOAS journal postgraduate research. Um, so, the SOAS journal editorial team. Uh, oh, Mariano, hi. <laughs> uh, we have Julia here. She will also talk about, she will talk about a uh, book review later. And we have Emily here. She's our co-editor of uh, event. And we have Mariano here. He is the co-editor of communication. Yeah, so thank you for joining us. Right, so let me share my screen. Make some slides. Can you guys see it? Okay. Right. Now I need to get my note. Right, so today's structure is, I will talk about where to publish, what makes a paper publishable and the review process of a journal. And then Julia will talk about book review. And uh, because book review is a very good way to start academic publishing. And then we will have a Q&A time. Right. So where to publish? Um, I would say at the beginning, try not to aim too high um, because you're not looking for a job in academia at this stage. So try to get your name out first. Um, if you want to apply for a PhD, you can start academic publishing after you start your PhD. You do not need to worry about it right now. But if you want to try academic publishing, then of course you can try. I think the, these are uh, some easier way to get involved. So the first one is student journals um, and also blogs. Here I'm not saying Try to uh, try to create a blog by yourself. I'm saying try to go to those established ones in your subject area. You need to get your name out first, um, and then is academic journals in different language. Um, some some journals in Europe, especially if the journal's main language is not English, they really want to take English pieces. So you can have a look at them. So it might be easier for you to uh, to get in. Is someone posting the chat? Yunzi, you continue, we'll take care of the chat. Okay, thank you. How do I remove the chat? Okay, good. So what makes a paper publishable? Um, first, you need to have a, here I'm talking about academic papers. So you need to have a clear and innovative argument. Innovative here, I'm not saying you need to create a completely new argument. That's almost impossible. So what I mean is that try to find a gap that not so much scholarships have covered. And then you need, your paper needs to make contributions to, the, to your subject area. It is not an assignment anymore. What a journal want is research contribution. So usually the structure of an academic, academic paper is you need to have your introduction and literature review methodology. Um, in some areas, for instance, maybe because I'm from arts and humanities, I'm from film studies. So in some areas, maybe economics or I mean, or finance, it is very important that you include your data and how you collect it. And also maybe in anthropology, you need to include your methodology in your, in your paper. But in some, for instance, in like media or film studies, 
you do not need to include your your methodology if it is just textual analysis like reading um and then case studies and then you need to have a conclusion so usually the most difficult part to write in the academic paper is literature review so i will just briefly talk about it um so try to direct your literature review with questions for instance you can guide your you can structure your literature review by, by answering these following questions. What contribution can my paper make to the subject area? Try to be as specific as you can. What are the, <clears throat> what are the focuses of other scholarships in this area? What my, why my research is important? What gap will my research fill? Why my angle or perspective is special? So try to justify the importance and particularity of your research and then it comes to the the review process um, here i want to briefly introduce the review process which is based on the model of the sjpr the source journal of postgraduate research so apart from the content what are an academic journal's expectations for a writer? A very important thing is, apart from the content, you need to have a great content. Apart from it is show that you're serious about the journal, not just us, I mean, all the journals, all the journals you wanna to submit, to your, submit your paper to them. You need to, for instance, you need to follow the style guide such as the font, the reference style, the, the word account, um, because we receive a lot of emails every day. Um, there are a lot of people asking us, well, I think I talked, there are a lot of people asking us like, can we change to your reference style after, after, you, after our paper got accepted? I mean, that is fine. Usually that's fine, but it is better that you know you change to uh, our reference style before you submit to us because that will be easier for the reviewers and also for the editors to work on your paper. Um, there are also people asking. Uh, my paper is around like four thousand words. It is from a, from a module. Um, can I maybe extend it afterwards? Or maybe some people just they just send us their MA thesis, which is twelve thousand words. Um, so I will say, this is not an assignment anymore. If your paper is written for a module, then you will need to extend it, revise it, and make it more critical, make it fuller. So an assignment is the difference between an assignment and an academic paper is, an assignment is a training. An academic paper is a research contribution. So you need to be aware of that. Um, just submitting your uh, assignment is not enough. And our requirement for a full article uh, is 6,000 words. So before submitting your paper to us, you need to, ex if, it, if it is below 6,000 words, then you need to extend it. If it is like over 6,000 words, then you need to shorten it. And also one important rule is you can only submit to one journal at a time. Um, this is a, so the journal after they publish your paper, they don't wanna see your paper elsewhere. So that's, a, yeah, it's not good to do that. Um, so the review process, the first, the first step is quality check. Papers which are obviously not qualified to get into the review process will be rejected. For instance, if it is too long or if it is too short, usually we, I mean, for us, the SJPR, we won't reject paper if it is, you know, if it is, a, it has a great content, but you know, there's maybe referencing style is not ours is fine, but if it is a big journal uh, or some very established blogs, then 
you need to be more careful about it. Because um, for instance, from my point of view, um, after becoming an editor in this journal, I feel like I would definitely be more serious about submitting a paper. I mean, the, the image that I'm trying to, uh, that I'm trying to convey, convey to the editors, that I'm trying to show to the editors, I'll be, I'll be definitely more careful about it. Um, so try to think about the publishing from an editor's point of view. What kind of paper, what kind of image do you want to see from the writers? And then after the quality check, it comes to the first round of review. The papers will be sent to two reviewers. In our case, those reviewers are SOAS PhD students. Um, and, the and the possible results. Oh, and also during the review, you wouldn't know who is your, uh, who are your reviewers and the reviewers won't know uh, your name, the writer's name. And the possible results are accepted with no correction. That's very, very rare. And then accepted with minor correction then accepted with major correction and then rejected. Um, however, some journals might be different. If it is major correction, they won't tell you if your paper is accepted or not because they want you to revise it and then resubmit and then they will make a decision, right? So, and then after you got your feedback, you need to revise the paper. The writers revise the papers. You need to address all the comments from the reviewers. And then you need to write a letter to the reviewers, how you addressed the comments, how you took them on board, why you did not take some points. Now the arguments are stronger in what reasons. Of course, you, don't, you do not need to apply all the suggestions the reviewers make. Um, but you need to tell the tell in the letter that why you disagree with the, with the reviewers, with a very polite with a polite tone. So try not to say, "I do not think you have fully understood my work." Try to say, "I disagree with you. I disagree with this point because," and then display your reasons. And the letter should not be too long. Two pages will be enough. Otherwise, the reviewers wouldn't have time to, to read it. And then the revised paper and the letter will be sent to the reviewers for their final approval. And then it comes to the final adjustment. Copy editors may have some questions for you, um, maybe on the footnotes, on your reference, or maybe on certain typos. However, no major change is allowed at this stage. So that's everything from me. And if you have any questions, you can ask, you can ask me during the Q&A time. And now, Julia, are you, are you ready? Yeah, ready when you are. Would you like to say something about book reviews in our journal? Yeah, so um, we don't, we don't provide our journal, we don't provide the books for you to review. So you need to, the very good way to access those books is you subscribe to the mailing list of publishers or you subscribe mailing list of some like, um, academic mailing list, like if you're from Middle Eastern study, you need to, uh, it is good that you sub, sub, uh, subscribe to the uh, Adobe Yacht. Or if you're from film and media studies and you sub, subscribe the mailing list of BOFs. So you get those books from uh, the publisher. You email the publisher and check, is there anyone Perhaps, who, so, sorry? Thank you. Perhaps I'll take it from here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so picking up on what Yunze said, uh, there are various ways to get books, and mailing lists are perhaps the the best way to do it. 
um, because people might send an email to a mailing list and say, we have those books. Is there anyone who wants to review them? Make sure that it's not the people who send those mailing lists do not ask you for a review to a particular journal because they may be editors of other journals and they're looking for reviewers for other journals. Um, so just like with articles, you don't send the same article to a number of journals. The same goes with book reviews. They're also sort of journal specific. You would publish them in one. I'll deal with the, the chat. Yeah, um, take questions because there have been a few um, and we'll have a Q&A session uh, at the end and we'll pick on all the questions you have in the chat. So keep them coming, as they say. Um, right. So don't be scared of that book pile on the side of the slide. It's not a, an accurate representation of the book pile that probably sits on the desk of each and every one of us. Um, the point of a book review is to help the book to find its audience. If it's a book about uh, a particular aspect of media, you want to write it for that audience that may be interested. It may not be just media studies people. It may be relevant to people who study um, related topics to media. But the idea of a book review is a kind of a publicity for it, for the academic audience. What should be in the book review? A short summary of the book. So sort of what is it about, generally speaking? Um, what, how, and why. So what is it about? How did the scholar do the research? What kind of methodology did they use? Was there a particular set of data that they used? Um, in which case, it's good to mention that. And also, why do you think it was helpful? So taking the topic or the research in mind, why do you think that this particular methodology or this particular data set was useful for that research. You can use quotations, use them sparingly. Um, but if you have something, a quote from the book that you think is perfect and very useful and good for the book and for the book review, you, then you can put it in. Just like with articles, uh, academic books point to their strengths and weaknesses. So what kind of things they do well, what kind of things they do a bit less well, but be careful with being too harsh because the book review is not a, by this stage, it's not a double blind review. You know, you have your name on the book review and the author of the book review will probably look it up to see, oh, someone wrote about it. So they'll know your name and you'll know their name uh, so be respectful the other thing that is good to put in the in a book review and i'm not sure it's on my bullet points is where is this book adding something new to an already existing field similar to a literature review in an article an academic book also adds something new to an existing field so pointing to that novelty is another point of a book review. And the last point is connecting the content of the book with the context, both general. So if, if the book might be interesting to people who are interested in that field, but not academics, it's a good thing to point. And obviously for academics in that field or related field, also good thing to point. Usually book reviews are short um, and you have a bit more flexibility with style and language than a journal article. Um, but good practice uh, applies for book reviews as well. 
whatever you do, do it with attention and be kind to others, whether you write about others' books or review um, others' books. That's it for me. Short and sweet. Thank you very much, Julia. Um, book review is a good way to start uh, in academic publishing, right? Yeah. Yes, because it's it's short. You have already something to base it on. It doesn't need to have um, an argument or a, a supporting points. You review someone else's work and reading someone else's work, interestingly enough, also helps your writing. Uh, one of the books that I reviewed was very, apart from being interesting, it was very useful to see the style of writing of other academics. And you can sort of hone your own writing by reading others' work. Yeah, thank you very much, Julia. Um, so right now it comes to the Q and A time. So let's deal with the 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 questions in the in the chat first. Okay, you can. See. There was one question about argumentative pieces uh, on critical opinions, two thousand words, and what kind of guidelines do they follow? So where is the question? Ah. Um, Argumentative piece, which is also called opinion piece. Um, usually I would say argumentative piece is more like a case study. It is very good to find a specific case to support your argument. And then you, uh, it's very much written, a, it's very much like written an essay like you, uh, your assignment. So first you will have your argument and then you will have your counter argument. Um, and then you have your case study to provide an analyze, uh, to provide analysis to this argument. Um, yeah, that's, does that answer your question? It's more like a case study. Yeah, I'm, I'm the one who asked the question. So I was just wondering, yeah, how does that differ from a regular essay? Like it's the argumentative part that I was kind of confused about because an essay is already something that you're arguing for, that you're already situating in a current debate. So I was wondering how is that specific? I mean, it's shorter than, than a dissertation or anything, obviously, so that, that's one specificity, but the part about opinion, how does that differ from other types of academic writing, if that makes sense? Yes, yes, yes. So basically, I think it is the case study part of the academic paper. So I just said there are introduction. Of course, you need to have introductions. But uh, um, as I said in the in the presentation, uh, the structure of the uh, of the academic paper is introduction, literature review, and then methodology and uh, case study and conclusion. So it's more like the case study part. But you need to. Uh, abstract the essence. Of course, you need to provide some literature review, but very, very short, just related to your argument. So your argument also need to be very, very specific. So try to narrow down as much as you can and then find a very specific case study to support it. So it's more like a, uh, it's, it's really more like a shortened lens a shortened version of an academic paper. And it's try to be as specific as you can. Uh, Julia, do you have something? I think an uh, argumentative piece will be something in between a long blog and a, an academic journal, and a long opinion piece in a, a newspaper for that matter, and an academic journal. Uh, so it still has to have those structural components, it still has to have an argument and an introduction and a, and a case study, but it's just a bit shorter. So you don't need to go to those extensive length of literature review and uh, all the rest of those. Yeah. Okay, um, so it's, 
it's sort of an academic op-ed, basically. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. No worries. There's another question of, do you have to be enrolled student or can you be an alumni? Uh, you can be an enrolled student or you can be an alumni, as long as you you are studying at SOAS or you were studying at SOAS, as long as you know you have some relations with SOAS, then it's good. You can be an enrolled student, then you can also be an alumni. Yeah. And I remember someone was asking about the mailing list. Yeah. Yes. There was one about mailing list. Yeah. So I do not know about your subject area. So different subject areas have different mailing lists and maybe a lot. So check with your tutor, check with your teacher. They will know. Um, for, for Middle Eastern studies, there are adult. And for media and film studies, right. So, yeah. oh, there's also the if it's regional, there's the HNet network. Yeah. Um, they have various mailing lists of various topics and various regions. So there is an Asia one or Japan one. Um, yeah, so basically it's more like uh, uh, they include all the informations of uh, arts and humanities. Yeah. Mm -hmm. HNET. I put it already. Oh, okay. uh, if... um, so there is a question about high impact journals. Talk a little bit about high impact journals. Could you talk a bit? Oh, okay, high impact journals. Mm. It depends. I know that it's the, the typical academic answer. It depends and it's not much of a help, but different areas will have different impact journals. A journal might be very good in a particular area, but publish in others as well. Let's say you go for a, for a journal of anthropology, which is a huge one, covers a whole lot of topics. It might be very good in a particular area and less impactful in another area. So it's not a clear cut um, sort of field. And the best advice that we always get and therefore we always say is that Go for journals that you cite a lot. Because the likelihood of your topic being relevant for those journals is higher than sort of random others that are relevant on paper, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree with Julia. Um, I think it also comes to the question of how to choose the journal how to choose a journal, right? So you need to, I, I think what Julia meant is that you need to, your paper needs to fit in, fit in the, the journal that you wanna submit to. Like you can check their previous issues, like what kind of papers, what topics they usually cover. And uh, you can see, then you can see if your paper will fit in. And, uh, is very, um, for high impact journals, it's very difficult to get in. That's the first thing. And you will have a long wait, two years, usually two years. Um, does the that, more, yeah, please. Sorry, the more popular, the more high impact the journal, the more people try to send their papers to, the longer the process takes. So it's a question of, do you need a publication quicker? Mm -hmm. And there it's better to aim for a slightly sort of medium grade of journals, but have a publication out uh, or aim for a, for a high impact one, but wait a long time with possibly 
not satisfactory result because that's all always an option. Exactly. I have a friend. He has waited for that paper to come out. I think it's the third year now. Yeah. So to be prepared if you want to submit to a high impact journals. And also for those, um, I know there are like ranks of impact factors online. There are different versions of it. Um, I think what Ju what Julia just said is very it's very uh, important. Uh, go su do submit to those journals that you always cite, because apparently it has a great impact on you and also your subject area. So those impact factor rankings, uh, usually, you know the the medical journals they will rank at the very top, and the arts and humanity journals will be like you don't know where it is maybe a thousand at the southern or something so but within the arts and humanities you also have the internal ranking so go for those that you cite more uh, just because the likelihood of you fitting in within the journal is higher exactly next question is how original does your work need to be try to be as Try to be original. Try to be as original as you can. I would say. <laughs> yes, but on the other hand, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. So the originality can be a very small contribution. That it can be applying an already existing methodology or theory on a field that wasn't studied. It can be fitting a new case study into an already existing field. It doesn't have to be something life changing. It can be just a small tweak to an already existing conversation. So think about academic journals like a write, written conversation. Various people say various things and you read those things and you say, okay, actually I have something to add to that. That would be your original contribution. Hope that answers. Exactly, exactly. Try to fill a gap. I mean, the gap doesn't need to be large gap. It can be very, very small and specific. Um, just try to add some new angles or a new perspective to understand an existing issue or an existing topic or existing theory. Try to cover those topics that are not uh, covered that much by other scholarships yeah next question is a, how can we learn more about what student journals there are in our area and can we as MAs only publish in student journals uh, of course you do not need to just publish in student journals I would say about that that Usually what people do is if they publish something from their MA, it will be a reworking of their dissertation. Because mm -hmm. that's the, the extensive work that you would do in, in an MA that will be suitable for a, a research journal. Um, yeah. But not smaller pieces usually. Exactly. And Other student journals? Uh, do check with your tutor because we only know journals in our area, even though journals in our area, I don't really know any student journals. Usually student journals, they cover, they're like us, you know, they cover a lot of areas um, because they are organized by school, by the university. Yeah, be university specific. Yeah. Um, and some journals, well, like us, they only open to their own university students. We only open to our own university students. So if you're a SOAS student or if you're a SOAS alumni, then you can submit to us. But students from other universities, they can't submit to us. Um, yeah. Next so, one is, sorry. Mm -hmm, please. 
Next one is, how do we know when they are asking for an argumentative piece? Is it called that on journal calls, sort of call for papers for a journal? Will it be, we're looking for articles and argumentative pieces? Is that what they're looking for? Mm, usually they will say it clearly in the call for paper. If they are asking for, if they want to, uh, if they want argumentative piece, they will say it clearly as we do. Mm -hmm. Next one is, if my opinion piece is published at the SJPR and I later build it, on, build it into an academic paper, can I submit the academic paper at a different journal? Hmm. I don't really know that this is a very tricky question. Julia, do you know? Um, no, but my suggestion would be ask the editor of the journal you want to submit to. Yeah. Because it all hangs on the question of plagiarism, basically using something you already did. Just like at SOAS, you cannot submit two papers on the same topic. That can be also a bit tricky. The best way is just to ask the editor of the journal, I've written this. What do you think if I can develop it into a larger one. It depends on how much new information you'll have in your journal compared to the opinion piece. Exactly. It's really just like, you know, monographs, monographs that are developed from our PhD thesis, I think. If you yeah. have published like 50% of your of your PhD thesis, and now you want to seek a publisher to publish a monograph, based on this PhD thesis, then you need to be clear with the publisher. I have published 50% of it. Can I still publish it as a book? Usually, well, usually it depends on the publisher, to be honest. So you need to ask the journal. Next one is, when will the next call for papers for SJPR be? Uh, the current one is still, it's still here. I mean, the deadline is 19th of April and we only have one issue per year. So the next one will be in spring, the same time, similar time range. Usually it will start at the beginning of February and then end at the beginning of April. Yeah. Next one is about submissions. Are they paid or are there fees? We do not pay you. <laughs> and, uh, and you don't pay us. But I know for some journals, uh, for instance, if it is, if, I mean, if at the final adjustment stage, when the copy editors are editing your work and you ask for so many changes, they will ask you to pay them. So just try to be prepared before the final stage comes. Try to make your paper as perfect as you want before the final stage comes. If you require too many, too much changes in the end, they might charge you on proofreading fee or copy editing fees. Yeah. But usually, no, there are no fees and you don't pay and you don't get paid. Um, but as Yunzi said, if there are changes at the very, very last stage after the review process, they might ask you to pay for uh, last minute additions. Usually they don't even allow changes at that stage after the review and after the proofreading, copy editing. So try to get to the stage where this is you're ready to let it go and that's it. Exactly. Can you tell us about the process of suggesting a paper to a journal? Do we just look for a generic email for the journal or there usually is a specific email for paper suggestion? How is it with RSA, for example? Sorry, can you tell us about the process of suggesting a paper to a journal? Do we just look for a generic email for the journal or they usually 
the specific in your paper. So right. I, yeah, I please. think in our case, uh, the call for papers is on a topic, in which case, if you have a, a paper to suggest and to send for uh, consideration about that topic, then uh, please do so. I mean, for us. Yes. Journals that are broader, that don't have a specific topic for uh, an issue, you can contact the editor of the journal and say, I have this topic, will it fit? And usually the editors will answer whether they think that topic can fit or not. So um, just contact the editor and there's no specific email for uh, paper suggestions, just the editor's email. Yeah, and uh, it is better to write a sort of like covering letter. Yes. The, yeah, to answer the questions like why you think your paper fit in and uh, talk about yesterday. Uh, why you think your paper fit in and uh, how your argument is uh, how your argument can fill a gap in the subject area. Yeah, stuff like that. Try to write a short one page covering letter to accompany your paper, accompany your idea, and then email it to the, to the editor. Again, think if you think about writing as a conversation, you want to show them that you can join an already existing conversation in that topic. Just like when you're standing in a party or, well, parties, we haven't had those in ages. But if you stand in a group of people and they're talking about a topic, you want to join in with something relevant to that topic. Same goes for journals. Exactly. Exactly. Is there a central place that sets out all the different journals? Oh, sorry, I think we have like, some questions that we skipped oh have a look our submissions usually pay, okay where can we access previous sjpr issues someone right. put a link in the chat so please have a look yeah can, there is a website where you can access all of them yes can mariano can you maybe post a link into the chat there is one already but i can post it again oh there's one already yeah okay good mm -hmm. Okay, where are we? Oh yeah, yeah. Someone, someone, someone posted. Thank you, thank you, Ambren. Sorry, I hope I pronounced your name right. We are uh, with. Uh, is there a central place that sets out all the different journals? Mm. Short answer: No. No. But big publishers like Routledge, like. Uh, Palgrave Macmillan, like uh, what are those? Interconnect. Uh, the, all the university publishing houses, so University Press, Cambridge Press, all of those, um, of course, all the American universities will have a list of their journals on their website somewhere. Uh, so, again, look which journals you cite where they, they are published, and then just go on the website of the publishers, you'll find somewhere there a list of the journals that they publish. Usually those big publishing houses have a lot of journals they cover. Exactly. But they only display the journals they publish. Yes. Yeah, so there's no central place for that. Is there a point when publishing becomes difficult if we don't have or are not yet working towards a PhD? Publishing is always difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you're working towards a PhD or you're already like, you know, already a established scholar, you got your PhD and work in the field for like many years, it's always difficult. You get rejections all the time. And even though I heard like in some I heard from some very, very established scholars, their professor, pro, sorry, professors already, like they submit to a they submit a special dossier together 
like a special edition together to a journal. And the professor's paper was kicked out by the by that journal because they just don't want don't want that kind of topic, maybe. So it's always difficult. Uh, there is a question about the deadline. Yes, it's the 19th. Yeah. And um, if you're wondering about the fact that publishing houses make money, but academics who do the research not, welcome to academic publishing. There are some open access journals, which then don't their, their model is a bit different uh, in terms of who is paying for what. But then the, the things that are published there are available and there's no paying wall that you get sometimes with journals and think, okay, you can read this bit, but if you want to read the next, please pay. Uh, but it's a slightly different style of journal, still academic, reviewed, everything. But in terms of its uh, financing, and who pays for what is a slightly different one to the ones that we're usually familiar with. Um, is it just student-run journals that don't pay, or is it every academic journal? Every academic journal. Yeah. They just provide a place for you to showcase your work. So they think that they're, they're, they're doing something good for you. So you, they don't pay you. <laughs> There's a, an, an, a question of just to clarify. Um, we mentioned earlier that master's publications are usually a reworking for dissertation. Mm. Does this include student journals or would it be feasible to publish something outside of our dissertation in say the source student journal? You can publish something outside your dissertation in our journal. That comment was mainly for the sort of high impact academic journals that are not student journals. So if you're aiming for the academic journals that are not student ones, that would usually be a reworking of your dissertation. But for our journal, you can take any other topic or essay that you've wrote and rework it. Yeah. The point is that you need to transform your, your assignment, even though the, I mean, even the dissertation is a kind of assignment, although it's a more accomplished one. You need to transform your assignment into an academic paper to make a research contribution. Assignment is just a training, but the academic paper is a research contribution. How to differentiate between student journals and others? Others usually have a publishing house behind them. So you'll see Routledge, you'll see uh, Oxford University Press, whatever else. Student journals are usually university specific. So it will be a SOAS student journal or whatever other university has one. They will say it, they will tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like a to... brief follow up about publishing as a master's student. As Yunzi said, you get rejected whatever your academic rank is. So if you want to aim for those articles, those journals and publish, go for it. We all get rejected. <laughs> they won't reject you because you're an MA student. Yeah. They will only reject you because your content does not fit into their journal or they think your, uh, your paper needs corrections or, I mean, you need to make a better argument, stuff like that. They won't reject you because of your, because of your identity. Is the 6,000 word limit for SJPR similar to other journals? More or less. More or less, yes. Yeah, some maybe shorter, 4,000, but usually That's more, 6,000. That's more or less the, the average length of a, of a journal yeah. article. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they won't reject you if you don't have a PhD. They'll reject you only on the content uh, and quality of the work. Exactly. It's not depressing. <laughs> it's okay. 
There's um, a way to get used to it. Yes, but also I think um, there's something in a way comforting in the fact that everyone goes through this at least once and usually a lot more. Um, so you're in good company. <laughs> exactly. How many submissions do you receive on average per journal in total? I mean, per issue for I mean, how many, you mean how many submissions do we receive, right? Uh, yeah, that's what I meant, yeah. Okay. Last year it was 30. This year we don't know yet. Mm. So around 30, I assume it will be around 30. that be considered a self plagiarism even if we quote hmm. i would be careful with this because of well partly because of similar topics but also because of timings the article may not be out yet before you need to submit your dissertation in which case you won't be able to properly quote it and reference it do check with your tutor, your teacher yes. about it. It's very, very likely that that paper is not out yet and you're, you have already finished your dissertation. <laughs> um, a journal article of 3000, yeah. You can change it to a, you can transform it into an argumentative piece or you can extend it to a full-length academic paper, which is 6,000 words, 6, words, if you want to submit to our journal. It does not include a bibliography. The 6,000 word limit does not include a bibliography. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. We feel we deserve more as well. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Right, I think that's all the questions, right? Um, we still have three minutes. If you have any more questions, we're happy to take it. No more questions? Well, you sure no more? <laughs> okay. Well, if you, if you do have more, you do know where to find us, so. Um, so we hope it was useful and, uh, thank you for joining us today. Yes. We hope, uh, have applications closed for, yes, assistant editors application have already closed. Try next year. If you're still SOS, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Well, anyway, I think, yeah, thank you for joining us. Um, I think that's everything for today, right? And we will post the, the recording as soon as we can uh, after the afterwards. Yeah, so that's everything for today. Thank you very much. Oh, would you take alumni for assistant editors? No, I'm sorry, no. We only take currently enrolled students, assistants, and editors. Right. Well, bye. Uh, sorry, I need to stop recording.